Hello people, this is Self Turds and in this video we'll see what is property mediator in WSO2 ESP or Enterprise Integrator. So during the WSO2 development, we will need multiple properties that we need to set in our flow and then later on we'll access those properties and take some decision. Like in the previous video of log mediator, we have used log mediator get property function to access a property and then log it. So in the full flow, we'll define multiple properties, we'll log it, we'll use it and we'll do many things with those properties. So in this video, we'll see what is property mediator. So with the property mediator, you can set a property with a value in your ESB flow. So the whole ESB project has multiple flows it means it can go to a different service and uh, bring the response from there we'll do some uh, modifications or enrichment to our response and then we'll transfer that particular uh, payload or message to some other rest endpoint or so or to some other service and then all these things will happen and in between all those things we'll need some properties that we'll set we'll access in service one then we'll ax we can access that in service two so this property mediator helps us to set a property or to remove a property from your esb flow so how we can set a property or how we can remove a property so we'll go to our this particular eclipse project that we are doing and inside that this is the rest api that we have developed in the last video we have seen this log mediator which we have used and the WSO2 server is running here. So you can see here this carbon UI service component management console is running here. So we'll go to our Eclipse and what we'll do from this time inside this mediator section of our palette. So if I'll click it, this mediator section will get closed. If I'll again click it, you can see there is a property mediator. And what does this say? Create new property mediator. So I'll click it and I'll drag it here. There is a tick mark. So I'll drop it here. Now what I'll do? I'll set a particular property name. So I'll say what is the name of project. So I'll say name of project. So name of the project is the property that I'll create. So this is just a label that I have written name of project. I'll double click it and this will allow me to change the properties or behavior of this property mediator. So there are different options. We'll see one by one. Now, if you want to set the property, you can use the existing properties that are present here. So there are different properties like error code, error detail. If you want to use these properties, then you can either set or remove. So suppose I want to remove this message ID. So what I'll do, I'll select it and I'll set this to set as remove. Remove. So what it will do, it will remove this particular message ID from my ESB flow. But what we are interested in, we are interested in setting a property. So what I'll do. I'll go here and I'll select what I will select new property, which means I want to create a new property and the name of this property. So it is given here new property name. So the name of this property will be what name of project. So I'll type name of project. So this is the property name that I'm giving it. Now I want to set it. I don't want to remove it. So I'll say set I click here and on setting it will give me different options so now the value type is either literal or expression so either you can use expression to extract property from the esb flow like using get property which we have used in log mediator so you can write an expression that is valid in wso2 esb and then you can set the value of this name of project by using this particular expression in this video we are interested in literal one because we are trying to learn what is property mediator so we'll select literal and then we, if we select it literal then there are different data type that you can set so I, either it is string or integer or boolean and there is a special format that is ohm which helps us to save xml elements or xml type of data inside our property so these are the different property type data type that we can store so we are interested in setting string and then the literal value so we say the name of the project is what self i'll type self turts wso2 learning so i'll say this is the particular project name that or that i'm trying to set inside the property name of project and then what is the pattern these things we are not interested in and the another important thing is the property scope so it is different scopes are present here so if you set a property 
then you can access that in different scopes like if this is a transport then you can access that inside your http calls or soap calls or if there is some access to then you can access those properties inside your access to server properties now we are not interested currently in different property scope the default scope is what synapse which is available everywhere so if you set this particular property scope to synapse then this particular project uh, this particular property that is name of project will be accessible everywhere so what i have done i have set this property now i i want to have set this property now i want to print or i want to log this property now i'll say you that where this particular property mediator is helpful now suppose you are sending a rest api request in which there is a uh, dynamic user id that we accept so our resource is something user and then the user id so in each request user can send a different user id so what this property mediator will do this will write this as user name of the user and then we can access it through expression using get property uri dot var and then the user id which we'll see later on in videos when we create our rest api i'm just trying to show you that how we can use it so currently we are interested or we have set only the literal property and then what i'll do i'll log it so i'll say what log this one and say i'll say log pro property so i'll give the name as log property then i'll double click it and this time what i'll do i'll go to this properties and here i'll type this one and then new and then this one i'll say project name what is our project name so i'll say this is an expression and this time what i want to do i want to access the property that we have set so we have set the property so we'll use get property function and inside this property function we'll write what this name of the project is the property that we have given during the configuration so we'll say name of project p r o j e c t so this is the name of project we'll again cross verify it so we'll double click here and this is same name of project now what we'll do this particular file has star so we'll click here and we'll hit control s to save it this one is saved okay so all the files are saved all the files are saved and now what i'll do i'll go to this server section we have done all these things how to set up the server and how to deploy or redeploy or how to connect it to wso2 instance so if you don't know then you need to follow my previous videos so i'll redeploy it again redeploying you can see here there's a carbon authentication and then it will de deploy it and it says application manager successfully deployed carbon application these things we have seen in previous videos now what i'll do i'll hit the request using our postman so i'll open postman and this is the rest url which we have created or the rest resource which is present in which we have created in uh, our wso2 and i'll hit send and this will do what this will say this me this time log mediator and project name as self touch wso2 learning so you can see we have set a property and then we have access access that property by using this log mediator same way you can access it using inside a endpoint that you will create means dynamically you will get the user id dynamically you will get the product id and you will set it and then you will transfer it to some other service so i'll again recap to you about this that this is the property mediator and inside property mediator either you can set a property or you can remove a property and there is a scope so the default scope is synapse and this property will be accessed on the inside your esb flow and then you can use it so this was all about how to use this property mediator how to set the property how to set your property a particular value and access it using log mediator so hope you like this video if you like my channel please subscribe to it please share these videos with your friend and thank you